Hello, I'm Nancy Perlman. On this edition of Eco News, we travel to Azerbaijan. This secular Muslim country on the Caspian Sea is proud to preserve its Jewish heritage and that of other faiths. Stay with us as we visit Jewish settlements going back hundreds of years and meet representatives of the current Jewish community. Hello, I'm here in Baku, Azerbaijan. With me is Rabbi Shanir Siegel. He is the chief rabbi of the Ashkenazi community of Azerbaijan, as well as serving as a representative of Chabad. Welcome, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Hi, hello. I'm really interested in being here and learning more about Jews in a secular Muslim country in this part of the world. Could you tell us how long they have been here and who is here now? In Azerbaijan, there is, um, the, today the biggest Jewish community is, uh, as they call themselves, mountain Jews. We call them also the Jews, the Kafkazi Jews, Jews from the mountains of the Kafkaz. And they are here in Azerbaijan for, I guess, around over 1,500 years. Uh, Ashkenazi Jews came to Azerbaijan about 200 years ago in the oil boom. Uh, Jews from Ukraine, Russia, Poland, uh, Belarus uh, immigrated to, here to Azerbaijan. And today we have about 30,000 Jews living in Azerbaijan, when 20,000 of them live here in Baku, in the capital. Uh, out of those 20,000, I believe about 7,000 are Ashkenazi Jews and the other 13 are Sephardic, Mountain Jews, Georgian Jews, but that, that's basically the community. It's called a Muslim secular country, but I would say that the local society is very open-minded, especially to the Jewish community. It's like a, it's like a, a very good relationship, even I would say, big friendship and between the Jewish local Jewish community and the Azeri people. Uh, walking down the streets here as a Jew, you feel very secure and uh, very respected, and uh, that's how we live here. The tolerance of this country is something that should be exported. And I think it's very important that people around the world should know about that it's such a country, the secular Muslim countries, where Jews live quietly, peacefully, and the Jewish life is thriving and developing. I am here in the office of the chairman of the religious community of the Mountain Jews of Azerbaijan. While there are about 15,000 Mountain Jews of Azerbaijan, some have moved to the capital city of Baku. In 2011, the government built them a brand new synagogue. This synagogue, in which we are now sitting, was completed and opened in March of 2011. It was built and given to the Mountain Jews community by order of the president of Azerbaijan and funded with money from the Presidential Foundation. And in addition to that, to keep the synagogue functioning, we also receive financial help from the Presidential Foundation. This synagogue and the Jews who come here are a testament to the fact that we live freely. We read our Torah, we practice our religion, and we enjoy all the constitutional rights that were given to us by the Constitution of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Here in the town of Aguz, about 200 miles from the capital city of Baku, is a Jewish population. Proud to maintain the synagogue built in 1849 and restored in the 1990s with the help 
of the United States Jewish World Congress. All of the Jews who have made Aliyah still feel they have a home here, whether they now live in the United States, Canada, Russia, or Israel. They all still have a connection to this place. Just in here. Traditionally, the women were up in the balcony. We, the Jewish people, can be found living throughout the world. And our wish for Jews everywhere is for them to prosper and to live in peace. We couldn't believe our good fortune when we were invited to the home of one of the community leaders to meet the families for an afternoon tea featuring delicious local sweets. Zubeda is the wife of one of the members who has been showing us around the Jewish area of town. And you have a beautiful yard. Thank you so much for sharing your home with us. As we got to know each other better, I felt that I could ask my new friends about what life was like in their Jewish community living under the government of the former Soviet Union, as opposed to now, in the independent republic of Azerbaijan. We didn't experience serious difficulties during the Soviet era, but the synagogues were closed. We couldn't go to the synagogues until the 60s and 70s when they began to reopen. This synagogue, for example, was used in those days for storage. But everyone experienced difficulties in those days, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, because the Soviet Union didn't encourage religion. This is a local map which shows the villages of the mountain Jews. This is a list of the mountain Jews who fought in World War II and died in battle. In this district, every family has a relative who died in the war. This is the newspaper of the World Mountain Jew Community. It's published in Moscow. In it, you can read about the cuisine, the customs, traditions, and language of the mountain Jews. All of the traditions, all of the customs are important to us. Even when atheism was the dominant religion in the Soviet Union, we were still keeping our traditions alive. I'd like to thank you all very much for uh, showing us your community and your center. Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure to be here and learn how Jews and Muslims can live in harmony. This is the famous Red Town in the Guba region of Azerbaijan. Located 102 miles northwest of Baku, this Jewish town was established by the Muslim Khanate and is one of the largest all-Jewish towns in the world outside of Israel. I'm here in the Guba district. With me is Evda Abramov, he is a member of parliament representing this district of Cuba in Quasar. He is also vice chairman of the Human Rights Commission of the Parliament of the Republic of Azerbaijan. 
He is also an historian for international relations and is a former teacher and director of a high school named after Isaac Hanukkah. Welcome, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Could you describe this district for us? I represent the northern region of the country in which we are now filming. This region is 100 kilometers away from the border with Russia. This region is famous for being multi-ethnic and there are several ethnic groups living here side by side. It's a very interesting region, both for politicians and for foreign tourists. You are the only Jew in Parliament in a Muslim country. What is that like? Maybe it's an extraordinary situation, but I accept it and I feel very comfortable with it. I'd like to tell you an interesting fact from our history. When the first Muslim Democratic Republic was created in Azerbaijan in 1918, even in those times, most of the minorities were represented in Parliament, and one ministry was given to the Jews. And now, following in this tradition, I still represent the Jewish population, but I represent them not as a Jew, but as a citizen of Azerbaijan. Shalom. Shalom. My name is Eliezer, and I am the rabbi for the community of the Red Town. I've been working in this position for 10 years. Currently, we have approximately 3,500 Jews living in the Red Town. In 1917, before the Russian Revolution, there were approximately 15,000 Jews living here. All of the Jews at that time were extremely religious. By today's standards, we would call them ultra-Orthodox Jews. In fact, before the Soviets came to power, there was no such thing as a non-religious Jew here. This curtain behind me, which is called in Hebrew a paroche, and behind that curtain are the arcs where we keep our sacred Torahs. We currently have 11 Torahs on site in this synagogue, but in total, the community owns 15. These sacred Torahs that I'm showing you are between 60 and 70 years old. The Hebrew inscription up above says that the world will be built with kindness. My name is Boris Simandyev, and I am the chairman of the Jewish community of the Red Town. In this community, each and every person, from the eldest to the youngest, knows their place in the community. That is to say, every Jew who lives here feels as though they are an inseparable part of the community. The state has created a great deal of economic opportunity for the local Jews to live and to prosper in this country. And as far as the relationship between the Jews and the Azeris, it could be described as a family that gathers around a bonfire to communicate, to socialize, and of course to get warmer. 
We're living in Azerbaijan for one reason, to contribute to the development and prosperity of this country. We, the mountain Jews and the Azeris, have relations like brothers. As we walk the streets of this old town, we see modern, new buildings as well as ancient buildings. It's a vibrant community. On the hillside above the town is the Jewish cemetery, which is still being used. Here is the tomb of a revered rabbi who in the 1740s protected this Jewish community from a foreign threat. There is no anti-Semitism in Azerbaijan. And Azerbaijan is one of the few developed countries that can be proud of its culture of tolerance and the respect accorded to the minorities living here. I was asked earlier, what is my wish for the Jews of America? I wish for American Jews that they experience the same level of tolerance that we, the mountain Jews, enjoy here in Azerbaijan. Due to the fact that Azerbaijan is situated between Europe and Asia, Azerbaijan was always an important strategic point for all of the surrounding empires and states. So, we, the Jews, in order to protect our national identity, our religion, our customs, ourselves, and our Torah, we had to live under certain rulers. The last threat to the Jews of this region was made by the Iranian Shah, Nadir Shah. That's why the rulers of Kuba, the Khan of Kuba, Hussein Ali Khan, and his son, Fatali Khan, in order to protect the Jewish population, he did the land which was situated right next to his own palace for them to live. And he ordered that, in case of any threat, if the Jews would light some signal fires, he would send help. That's why the main road in this town is named after Fatali Khan. And we also plan to erect a monument for him. Obviously now you have the same freedoms as all the other citizens of this country. But do you feel Jewish first or Azerbaijani first? I'm proud to be a citizen of Azerbaijan and I'm grateful to my ancestors for choosing to live in this country as opposed to Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan and other countries of this region. And I'm proud to be a citizen of a Muslim country, a country that has Islamic values, to live in such a country that protects the Jews, that protects their Jewishness, their religion, that protects the Torah, that protects and builds synagogues, and provides the Jews with all kinds of freedom. Azerbaijan and Israel have enjoyed a strong friendship for many years. Diplomatic relations between the two countries were first established in 1992. Today, 
Numerous Israeli companies are active in Azerbaijan in a variety of commercial fields, including telecommunications, agriculture, energy, technology, medical services, and tourism. In the commercial sphere, Israel, along with Italy, is a major trading partner with billions of dollars worth of contracts and ongoing commerce with Azerbaijan. Many high-ranking Israeli officials have visited Azerbaijan over the past years. In 2009, Israeli President Shimon Peres made an official visit to Azerbaijan. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman also have visited Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan provides around 50% of Israel's oil, significantly contributing to Israel's energy security. And at the same time, the government of Azerbaijan has been investing heavily in alternative energy. And currently, we're using the Israeli experience as our model, applying that model to Azerbaijan. As you probably saw on the road from Baku to Guba, we built numerous solar and wind energy electrical generating stations. I'm now at the Jewish School of Baku, also known as Habab or Avnir. Shalom, shalom. The students are greeting us and showing us one of their Hebrew lessons. We'll find out more about what is offered at the school with the director, Yachim Lesnik. Welcome, it's a pleasure to have you with us. The students were so excited to see us and I was so pleased to see them. Do they enjoy learning Hebrew? In our school, we have a lot of different subjects. Kids here are studying all subjects, according to the laws of the Ministry of Education of Azerbaijan. For part of it, we have Hebrew and we have Jewish culture, and for the elder classes, we also have Jewish history. The kids love those lessons, as they also love taking part in Jewish life here in Azerbaijan. I also wanted to mention that those subjects, Hebrew, Jewish culture, and Jewish history, used to be just extracurricular. About a year ago, we approached the Ministry of Education with a request to have them become part of the main curriculum. The Minister of Education accepted our request. So now, when our students earn their diplomas, they are also considered to have earned a degree in these Jewish subjects. I'm a teacher. I've taught junior high, high school, college. In our colleges, I'm, I'm the trustee in, for nine community colleges in Los Angeles. That's my real job. We volunteer to do this. But in our colleges and in our schools, we believe in multicultural education so that the, we have people of different ethnic groups learning about people of different ethnic groups. So I'm wondering, do you invite Muslim children in to learn more about Jewish life and people? Whenever we celebrate holidays here, we invite guests, Jews and non-Jews alike. And for every holiday, there are always big parties and big events that everyone is welcome to attend. And then, of course, sometimes we go out into the secular community. Not too long ago, our students prepared a very interesting program that was performed at a nearby army base in honor of a local Azeri holiday. We put on a concert for them which also included a presentation on Jewish life, 
Jewish dances, etc. It's been a pleasure to see the historic and modern Jewish life in this Euro-Asian country on the Caspian Sea. I encourage travelers of all faiths to visit and see how people can live in harmony. On behalf of our nonprofit organization, Educational Communications and Econews, I'm Nancy Perlman wishing you a natural, unspoiled environment.